All right, the next step is to add some code. And we want this game to be interactive and do something. And again, I've set up a Visual Studio ahead of time. Some of you might be using MonoDevelop, that's fine too. But either way, I'm going to go to the Assets panel, right click, and I'm going to create a C Sharp script. I'm going to call this script Turtle Controller. Turtle Controller. And notice I'm using no space at all. Right, so this file is going to be named turtlecontroller.cs for a C Sharp. If you click on it, you kind of see the default code which is created for you. I'm going to go ahead and double click. It's going to start up Visual Studio, or whatever your file extension is. All right, and here's my default code. Notice that the name of this class, it has to match the name of the file. Visual Studio does this automatically for you. Um, if this, for some reason, looks different than the name of your file, you want to change it. All right, so Turtle Controller. It extends the mono behavior class. I'm going to add a little bit of code. Uh, not a lot of fancy things to begin with. First, I just want to add some code to verify that everything's working. There's two default methods which are included. One of them is a start method. This runs once. And the update method runs once per frame. So usually a game running at 60 frames per second, this will run 60 times per frame. I'd like to add a line of code into the start method. This is going to be some simple code. I'm just going to say print. This is kind of a tradition in computer science. Hello world. Then a semicolon. And so this will print the message hello world. I'll save this. All right. So once you've entered in this line of code, I'm going to go ahead and minimize and head back to Unity. I've got a script. But the script does not run unless I assign it to an object in the game. Eventually, I'm going to use the script to move the turtle around. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and attach the script to the turtle. The way you do that is by clicking and dragging. So I'm going to click and drag the turtle controller script to the turtle. You can verify this has worked correctly by clicking on turtle in your hierarchy. And over in the inspector panel, you'll notice that now there's something for turtle controller script. To test if this works, you can go ahead and press play. You might be wondering, where do these words appear? By default, text is printed to the console. To see that, um, right above the assets panel, there's a tab which says console. If you click on that, you should see the words hello world, which is run by the print method. All right. Um, another fun thing you can do while the game is playing, notice there's a button that says Maximize on Play. I'm going to go ahead and click that. So now when I play, it actually fills up the whole screen, which is kind of cool. And also, the console messages will be printed right down here at the bottom. All right, so we've got a script um, that doesn't do anything very interesting. and using the console window really isn't how you communicate with your players. I just attached that so we could verify that our code is working. I'd like to go ahead and add some keyboard based movement now. So I'm going to go back to my turtle controller script and I'm going to do this in a couple of ways. First I'm going to add some variables which will control the movement speed of my turtle, both the uh, moving forward and the rotational speed. All right, so first I'm going to add some public variables right here. Uh, two floating point numbers. First, move speed. Set that to 1.0F. And public float turn speed. Also set that to 1.0F. And I might want to adjust these values later. Making these values public variables makes them very easy to adjust actually from inside Unity. Right, so I've got some public variables defined. Now I'm going to go down to the update method. I'm going to add a couple of lines of code. This is going to be very simple keyboard-based input. I'm going to check to see which keys are being pressed. So the code I require is if input.getKey. This is going to check to see if a key is currently being held down. So this is good for continuous style input, like movement. And then this requires an argument, key code dot up arrow. 
So this is going to check to see if the up arrow is being pressed. If so, I'd like to change the position of the object. So I'm going to say this dot transform dot position. So this refers to the object, the game object to which this is attached. Transform, you, re you might remember that's the small box at the top of the inspector which lists all sorts of information like scaling, rotation, and position. So what I'd like to set this equal to is, let's see, it's going to be equal to this dot transform dot position so it's going to be equal to the original position plus I want to add some displacement in the forward direction and there's a class which stores the default forward vector called vector 3 dot forward but I'd like to scale this by whatever my movement speed is so I'm going to multiply it by move speed however there's a slight problem with this which we won't see right away but we'll fix it ahead of time. After the turtle turns, it's going to have a different forward vector. Right? Vector 3 dot forward, you can think of that as kind of a global forward direction. We want the turtle to move forward with respect to its local rotation around whatever axes it's been rotated. So I actually need to multiply this vector by its rotation data. So I'm going to say this dot transform dot local rotation. And so I need to do this extra thing in order to get the rotation vector to look correct. And of course there's shorter ways to write this set of code. Visual Studio is trying to help me by saying you don't need this. And I could actually use plus equals here. The vector class is great. It supports operator overloading. But this will work. This will be sufficient for our purposes right now. So, if the user is holding down the up arrow key, the position should be incremented by whatever its current rotation is times the move speed. Let's go ahead and save this and head back to Unity and play the game. Alright, if I press the up arrow, notice he moves. He actually moves pretty fast. In fact, he flies off the screen relatively fast. That's okay though. If I click on the turtle object in the hierarchy, notice in the inspector panel, the turtle controller script, all those public variables will be listed right here. So if the move speed is too fast, I could adjust that. Maybe I'll change that to 0 0.1. It's really convenient, so you don't have to go back into the original code. Now if I press play again, and press the up arrow key, that's a little bit better. And there he goes. See you later, turtle. We'd like the turtle to rotate next, so we add a few more lines of code. Going back to the turtle controller class, I'm going to add a new if statement. This is going to be if. Again, I'm going to check to see if a key is currently being pressed, so get key. Uh, this is key code dot, we'll do the left arrow first. In this case, we're changing the local rotation of the turtle. This dot transform dot local rotation is equal to, let's see, I've got to somehow change the rotation. And so the way we do this, just like position is stored in a class called vector3, rotation style information is stored in a class called quaternion. So quaternion.euler, 0, comma, negative turn speed, comma, 0. All right, so this will rotate around the y-axis. Remember, y-axis points up and down. So rotating around that axis will turn left and right. So I'm going to rotate by this amount. So this transform rotation. And the other interesting thing about rotations is they're multiplied rather than added. To change the position, I added something to the original position. To change the rotation, I'm multiplying the original rotation. So this dot transform dot local rotation. 
and I might as well add in the right arrow turning as well. It looks very similar to this block of code, so I can go ahead and copy paste it. I just need to make a few changes. Change left arrow to right arrow, and the turn speed is positive, turning to the right. All right let's go ahead and save those changes. Here they are. If you want, this is a video, so you can go ahead and pause it if you like to take the time to get this code in. Save and go ahead back to Unity. And let's try this out. So now, pressing left and right turns my turtle to the left and the right. And if I press forward, my turtle moves in that direction. Hooray! Now we can climb over Starfish. What fun! And notice the position, the forward vector is changing depending on the current local rotation of the turtle. That's super important. All right, we've got a moving turtle. That's pretty cool. What would be even cooler is if the turtle could collect starfish. So we'll add some code for that next. Part of the tricky part of working with Unity is sometimes figuring out what is the method that does what I want to do? So in order to process collisions, there's kind of a default method in Unity which would check for collisions. So I'm going to go down here after the update method and write another method. This method is called uh, void return type, doesn't return anything. On collision enter takes as a parameter a collision object stores collision related data. It's important to get this method signature perfect. The spelling counts, capitalization counts, it starts with a capital O. Collision, that matters a lot. Uh, the name of the variable doesn't matter though, but the method name, the parameter input type definitely matter. Alright, this is also where that tagging of the star object will come in useful. So, I'm going to do an if statement. Whenever the turtle collides with an object, as reported by the rigid body behavior, this method will be activated on collision enter. So I'm going to check to see what I collided with. Right, so the collision object, it stores any game objects involved in the collision, and I'm going to check what kind it is by checking its tag. I'm going to check to see if the tag is star. It's a way of distinguishing the different types of objects. And if that's true, there's a method called destroy. I can just destroy that object. So call dot game object. All right, that's it for now. Let's go ahead and save and see if that turtle can collect those starfish. Going back to Unity and hit play happens when I touch the starfish, poof, it disappears. My turtle is now a real starfish collector.